Hi, hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Courtney, you can call me Quartz, and I am a self-proclaimed fangirl. I mean, it's pretty obvious if you follow me online. And this month, this holiday season, I am feeling very grateful because Hollywood has gifted us with a new heartthrob, delicious talent, Tom Blay. Who is also a self-proclaimed fanboy. So I feel like we can just really relate on that, if you know what I mean, Tom, if you're watching. This is a new series that I'm trying out on my channel. I've always wanted to spotlight more actors and talk more about the acting craft as an actor myself. So here we are. We're, we're ending 2023 with a little dibble dabble in that. I really want to showcase as much talent as I can on this channel. So that is going to be one of my main motivations moving into 2024, as well as showcasing all of the incredible hard work that goes into filmmaking. Now, before we get into the video, like, subscribe. It really, really helps me out. I'm a growing creator and I really could use the support. It's Christmas. It's free. If you're in the mood to give, give me a big thumbs up. Thank you. But because it's so rare that we get a fresh, crispy, delicious talent like this. Tom Blythe, a history. In the wise words of Brittany Broski, there are two requirements when it comes to being a fangirl. Number one, delusion to a certain extent, to a safe extent. Delulu is the Salulu, and that was my mantra for 2023. But also what she refers to as a teeny tiny kernel of hope because that is what generates the money. In retrospect, with that being said, if Hollywood was as greedy as we know them to be, we would be seeing a Hunger Games sequel to the prequel, just so they could make that bag off of Coralina Snow, AKA Tom Blythe, and feed the fangirlies who are ever so hungry in these wild, wild games. However, I will say respect to the director of the Hunger Games, he has simply put that they will not be putting out a sequel to this prequel unless one is written by Suzanne Collins. So, mad respect there. Now let's get into Tom Blythe, okay? So I've been doing my research and there's not a lot to be said about this man. I know what your first question is. I know what you're thinking. Does he have a girlfriend? Is he queer? Is he gay? What's he into? Well, here's the answer. We don't really know. <laughs> Some fans on Instagram were speculating that he had a girlfriend because a Hunger Games fan account posted an ambiguous photo. So some people speculate that Tom Blythe is indeed straight and in, is indeed, does indeed, indeed have a girlfriend. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, if that's all you came for, I'm so sorry. Tom Blythe, born February 2nd, 1995. He is 28, a 90s baby like me, where he is an Aquarius, which we should all be worried about. Other men who you may know who fall into the Aquarius category being Harry Styles, who we all love and adore, Although if you're a Swifty and you've listened to any of the 1989 vault tracks, then you know it's all, it's all a bunch of woo-woo anyway. Tom is from Birmingham in a suburb of what I understand is Nottingham, which I thought, I thought Nottingham was like a bougie area. So he might be a little bit on the bougie side of the British, if you will. Um, my British friends, please comment below and let me know if I'm accurate on that. He also was like studying acting since he was a child. His father was actually a film producer slash journalist, probably a movie journalist. Unfortunately, his father did pass away when he was young. So his mother being a career counselor saw his interest in acting and put him in classes and as much training as possible as she could while he was still young because anyone with a brain and knows anything about Hollywood knows that that is what you have to do if you want to be a successful young actor. His mom signed him up for classes at the television workshop, which was previously known as the Central Junior Television Workshop. Now I have a friend and I'm pretty sure she auditioned for this as a kid when she was growing up in Britain. So Louisa, if that is true, please let me know. <laughs> if that's the one, because that's crazy. Lots of young British stars start to develop their skills in that program and begin forming the basics of the acting craft. Other kids that you might know who have also done this program, Bella Ramsey, um, crazy and following that tom blythe joined the national youth theater which is oddly a charity and so was the television workshop central junior television workshop Both of those training academies that he attended were charities which i think is really interesting and actually smart because it gives the film industry an opportunity to give back to the youth by donating and supporting that as a system of education or it could be a tax write-off who knows this tom joined the national youth theater which is in London, London based, but they audition kids all around the UK. This is where you really take your career to a more serious level as you're still 
you know, in that teenage years, but you, you fall into this category of like serious actor by simply attending these theater companies. Both of those required an audition to get in, much like Juilliard, which he later attended in New York City. And anybody, anybody out there who's an actor, I know, I know you want to go to Juilliard, I know, but you don't have to, but I know it would have been so great. <laughs> Tom graduated Juilliard around the same time that this guy was trying to audition for Juilliard, which is, feels like a fever dream now. If anybody has an update on that guy, I um, actually don't care. If you live under a rock and you have no idea what Juilliard is, it is the most prestigious acting school in North America. And many of your favorite actors have graduated from there. Name a few, we got Viola Davis, also in The Hunger Games, Robin Williams, Jessica Chastain, Oscar Isaac, Adam Driver, like, you get it. It's like cream of the crop training. At one point, Tom also mentioned being trained by Daniel Day-Lewis, who he also referenced as his main inspiration for acting. So that says enough about his training, okay? He knows what he's doing in front of the camera. And I will say, I think, like, obviously having some of the best training in the world and having that just simply exist on your resume definitely gave him a level up from everyone else who auditioned for the role of Coralina Snow. So backing it up, before he graduated Juilliard, his first movie role was um, in Robin Hood, that one with Russell Crowe, which I did not see. I even tried to find clips of Tom in it online, but he was literally a child and his casting name on IMDb is Feral Child. So couldn't really pick him out of the film in the few clips that I did see, but still what a great place to land, a feature film in a scene with Russell Crowe. Not bad for your first on-screen gig. While he was in school, before he was graduating, he did a lot of short films, which, well, not a lot, a few, a handful, which is pretty average. Most actors will take on a handful of short films before they start booking paid gigs. And so I did some digging and I was actually really surprised to find a few trailers. Well, I found one for this short film called Wash Club. Wash Club is the story of a journalist who accidentally becomes the ringleader of a secret society that he's supposed to be investigating. And allegedly it's based on a true story. The trailer looks so good. Like it just looks beautifully shot. The story looks intriguing. It's giving like Fight Club, but with this really lighthearted tale of kids who like to ride inside of washing machines. <laughs> I don't know how long the film is. I couldn't really find much on that, but the film looks beautiful and what a fun project to be a part of. He also did a short film called Fibs, which appears to be a romantic drama. I did find the trailer, although Tom did not make an appearance in it. He did another short called Fluffy, where he plays a party clown. That's what he's titled as in, in his credits, but I, again, I couldn't find any footage on this one, unfortunately. Um, if anyone else has any leads on that, please let me know. I would die to see that and be the first one to upload it to TikTok. <laughs> and lastly, he did a short, a TV short in the UK called Rise, and I couldn't find any footage of this. However, there's lots of stills on IMDb. So it appears he's playing some sort of tennis player. It looks a bit period. It's kind of fun. Post-grad, post-Juilliard life, Tom did a feature film called Scott and Sid, and that one came out in 2018. It's a coming of age written and directed by the two title characters. So Scott Elliott and Sid Sadowowski. It looks like they're two friends who wrote this movie about what it's like being two friends trying to make it in the film industry. And Tom was cast as the lead. So that excellent, excellent place to be. Fast forward to 2021, we have Benediction, which is an English war poet who embarks on a lifelong quest for personal salvation. It sounds heavy and it is a period piece, but this one was well received. And I think I read somewhere that this performance in this particular movie was what got him more noticed and eventually landed him the role in one episode of The Gilded Age, which I've been meaning to watch simply for the costumes but he did that episode in 2022. It's an HBO series following high society in 1880s New York and all of the conflicts surrounding new versus old money. I think it's actually probably pretty good. It's probably up my alley. I should watch this. Like I have not seen, what is that one by Shonda Rhimes that everyone's always upset about? <laughs> Bridgerton. I feel like I can see Tom Blythe being like a period actor. Like he could be like a Keira Knightley, if you will. He just has that vibe, that face. And then in 2022, he landed the lead role in Billy the Kid, which is an MGM series. I think that belongs under the umbrella that is 
Amazon um, or Disney, one or the other. Billy the Kid just got renewed for its second season, so we can expect more of that in 2024, maybe late 2024. Billy the Kid is an epic romantic adventure following the infamous cowboy and gunslinger in the American frontier, um, which is really cool to be a lead in a TV series. Like, that's honestly the actor dream because you get consistent paychecks and consistent work guaranteed. The craziest thing that I found out about Billy the Kid just watching a simple interview was that it was actually filmed in my hometown. Filmed in Canada, in Calgary, Alberta, um, which you wouldn't think was a Western place, but actually they've got an incredible Western culture. They still, they have a stampede every year, which is like one of the world's biggest like celebrations of Western culture wow. and horses and, and riding and everything. And so we were there right at the start of that. So um, literally the first day we got there, we were like out with these guys on a ranch riding off into the sunset and I mean it was wow. easy to pretend it didn't you didn't have to kind of imagine much. I'm so thrilled to see so many productions going up there. We had The Last of Us season one shoot up there and it seems to be just becoming more and more of like a film hub. Really really thrilled to see that a lot of these big productions and big shows are coming up to Calgary. And also that means my Calgary girlies keep your eyes peeled for Tom Blythe because he might just be around next year. And that brings us to The Hunger Games, A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which of course has just launched Tom Blythe into a stratosphere of celebrity that could have only been a mere sparkle in his eye prior to that. I was thinking about this the other day, like how, how you get a role like that, you must, like your whole, your team, your management, your agency, like they must like sit you down and be like, okay, your life is never gonna be the same if you choose to take this path. Not only are you sort of a part of a historical piece of literature, can't even deny that, it's beyond popular. They had to know that the girlies would be simping after, after President Snow because they knew what they were doing. They knew who their audience was. They knew. So all in all, Tom Blythe is a classically trained actor, Juilliard graduate, who I can see already has such a fruitful career ahead of him. But that's it, that's all I could really dig up on Tom Blake. I wanted to find some juicy tea, but like I, like I said, feel like your team and your management sits you down before you take roles like this. And I think they probably made him clear out his Instagram and clear out anything on the internet that could possibly be anything worthy of finding. Leave me your fun Tom Blythe facts in the comments because I truly do love this man. I feel like he's gonna do really great things. He's super talented, it's undeniable. I love how he talks about the craft in all of his interviews and how he's excited about storytelling through the vessel of acting. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. Snowman's on top. See you next week, Mary Mary. <laughs>